um, uh, that movement of transcendence also brings God much, much closer to us. Who is closest to Frodo? Saur a good Sauron, who's within um, Frodo's order and so on, or Tolkien, the one who wrote the thing. And our instinctive answer is Tolkien. Tolkien is much, much closer to Frodo than anything within Frodo's world uh, could ever be. There are certain theologians who think that God should be brought closer to us, and uh, they, they sometimes think that the, that is the God of the Bible, as opposed to this evil God of Greek philosophy who is outside time and outside space and all that kind of thing. Um, be very careful, I think, in um, fooling around with changing these balances. You may not get what you want at the end, and you may, without knowing it, turn God into a sort of a good Sauron, so somebody who exists within a larger context of things. But if you exist within a larger context, there is always a distance between you and anything else which is in the context. Whereas somebody like Tolkien has, has uh, a relation which is obviously quite different. One eight of the Summa, Aquinas asks if God is intimately uh, uh, present in all of the things which are in the um, universe. And he answers yes, because he is so transcendent. Uh, so um, that is something on um, the relation between God and creatures. Um, and that's part of the downward movement of Thomistic theology. Something on the upward movement, which is the relation between nature and um, grace uh, and so on. Um, human beings, as we know, um, have a tremendous restlessness, which betrays a desire for the life of God, divine life. Um, but... There is also um, a, there is a problem as to how these uh, two uh, things might relate to one another. Now, the simplest model of a relation between divine life and human life is that if, 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 cre if human life or creaturely life allows the divine into itself, the divine will swamp it and take it over. Uh, and it will not really be there as itself anymore. And this is probably one of the great fears that we have in um, uh, thinking of religion and the commitments involved in religion, that if I say yes to this and give myself over, then I will not really be there anymore as me. I will not have a life of my own. Where I used to be will simply be a locus for good works and pious thoughts or something like that, and it won't really be me anymore. And that's one of the great fears that we have. There's a little image of this um, out of the um, uh, pagan Greek world is the um, image of the, uh, the oracle of Delphi in Greece. So this was an oracle. People would come along to it with a question. They'd ask their question. And then the priestess would go to a certain place in the cave and she would go into a trance. So she would come... Uh, sort of out of herself, so she was not really there as herself anymore. She would be in the trance, and then she would emit a series of sounds. They were described by one observer as sort of short, dog-like barks, sounds which were unintelligible and so on. The priests who were nearby would then interpret the sounds as an answer for the person who had um, brought the question. And that seems to be to be a, a very direct model of the relation between um, the divine and the human, that if the divine's going to come into the human, it overwhelms it, and the human is not really there anymore as the human. Now, Aquinas, uh, if, if we think it that way, then we seem forced to one of two bad choices. One of them is we give up ourselves and we sort of cease to be human and we become those who are simply concerned about the universal command of charity or whatever, but we, we feel we, we are no longer human anymore. The divine has swamped us. Or on the other hand, we can defend ourselves against the divine and retain something that is at least human in its own terms. So two bad choices. Um, and philosophy uh, around um, 1900 was coming in some quarters to the view that if we were going to be really human, we had to hold off the divine. The philosopher Nietzsche is associated with that kind of thought. Um, at least hold off the divine in any sense in which it's traditionally been thought. Now, Aquinas gives one of the best accounts in Western history of why the human being is not forced to one of these two bad choices. 
that in fact the two can be thought together and there is a way that you can integrate both of them um, into a, um, a good life. So Aquinas, as we know, believes that grace does not destroy nature but brings it to perfection. Now, that, that is easy to say but is very, very hard to think because grace comes to us from outside, sort of, sort of like an, an alien now, if it's going to take us over, why aren't we just being taken over by a hostile foreign force that will be there and we will no longer be there? Because of the way that Aquinas thinks both of the terms, the way that he thinks grace on the one side and the way that he thinks human nature on the other side. And so, um, especially the way that he thinks human nature and is very delicately balanced. And so he can, he can show how something can come to us from outside, but it does not come to us as an alien or a foreigner, and that being taken over by it, we actually become more ourselves and discover ourselves more. We discover the things that we really wanted, and we sort of get to the bottom of what we were um, in the first place, which, while we were simply existing as nature, uh, especially in the fallen world, was impossible for us to do. Um, I'll um, take a... Um, an example of how this kind of thought works itself out um, in Aquinas. Um, this is from the um, uh, uh, place in the um, Summa Theologiae. It's um, 1, 2, uh, 19, and Article 10. And he asks, say there's a woman who's the wife of a fellow <coughs> who has committed some crime and who deserves to be punished for the crime. <clears throat> Perhaps he even deserves to be executed for it. Then, is the wife, if she is to be moral and good, obliged to adopt the viewpoint of universal justice and hope and pray that her husband will be caught and executed? <clears throat> and Aquinas answers, no, she is not. The good action and the virtuous thing um, in her situation is to be the man's wife. She is his wife. God does not want her to act as God would have acted here. God wants her to act as a wife should act here. So God, in making this limited perspective on the world, which is being the, the husband or somebody or the wife of somebody, even though that is limited and it, it is less than the divine, the whole idea of the creation is to affirm that as a good thing and that that is where one's salvation will be worked out. So while other thinkers would have said, uh, in order to be good and moral, she must leave the viewpoint of a wife and uh, move towards the viewpoint of a un universal justice. Aquinas thought, no, that, affects, that, that um, offends against God's affirmation of his creation and so on. Um, to make the um, example perhaps just a little easier, imagine there's a person who's been, who's been condemned for a crime that they really committed and so on, etc., etc. How should you act towards them? if you were their friend. Now, there's probably various cases, but I think Aquinas might suggest, okay, you wake up and you find you are this person's friend. That is where providence has put you, and that is where you will work out your salvation, being their friend. You are perhaps the person who goes to court with them, and so on, all that kind of thing. That is your role. It's not the role of everybody on earth. The judge has a different role and more to do with representing the viewpoint of um, universal justice and so on. Now, that's, in order to think that and to think it straight is very hard. You've got to think a lot of other things around it very carefully. Aquinas did that superbly well with his account of uh, nature on the one side and grace on the other uh, so that you can hold the things in balance and the one does not destroy the other but completes the other and elevates it and raises it and so on. That's Aquinas in 15 minutes.